On behalf of Tori Harris Integration Solutions, the meetup community, I, Sham Patasarathy, sales lead for the US market, welcome you all to today's meetup. Uh, let me start with a Bitcoin like statistic, right? The annual per capita expenditure on healthcare in the US was a meager $145 in 1960. Today, it stands at $12,000, and it's almost growing by $1,000 every year. That's a staggering 82-fold increase in just 60 years. To put this into perspective, the annual per capita income of the average American only grew 20-fold in the same time span. This discrepancy has been further accentuated by a raging pandemic, growing unemployment, and fluctuating government policies. Under such circumstances, there could not have been a better time to explore ways to reduce the cost of care. The growing cost of care can be attributed to several contributors. Drugs are getting more expensive, doctors are getting paid more, hospital services, diagnostic tests, all cost more. But at the same time, a lot of money also goes into planning, regulating and managing medical services at the administrative level. Studies estimate that anywhere between 15 to 30 percent of the total healthcare spend in the US goes towards such administrative overheads. For example, with the current billing systems, it takes 770 medical workers just to collect one billion dollars in fees. Similarly, millions of dollars are spent every year just to physically print medical records and transport them to physicians who serve on another network. Despite all of this, another study shows that two thirds of patients still don't feel empowered to control their healthcare journeys despite paying so much. With all of this, how can payers, providers, pharmacy business managers prepare their ecosystem for secure data interoperability? What solutions can you deploy to meet the CMS mandates? These are the kind of challenges that today's topic aims to address. A warm welcome once again to the meetup on the topic approach to enable your IT systems for FHIR or FHIR HL7 standards compliance. Today we have with us Karthik TS, the head of the Center of Excellence at Tori Harris Integration Solutions. Karthik heads the Center of Excellence and the products team at Tori Harris Integration Solutions. Over the last two decades, Karthik has worked extensively with telcos, banks, and financial institutions helping them define their integration strategy and onwards to realize this digital business objectives. In his current role, he spearheads organization-wide initiatives, productizing solutions to accelerate enterprise digital imperatives. Karthik has co-authored the book, Digital API Economy, Beneficiaries, Enablers, and Catalysts. So with that, let's hear it from Karthik. Over to you. Thank you, Sean. Hope you are able to hear me loud and clear. Okay, so we'll get started with uh, our approach to enable your IT systems for uh, fire compliance. Um, so before I talk about the approach, I thought it would be good to give you an introduction to fire. So some of you who would have seen this meetup topic would have done some research, so you may be having some ideas. But uh, but I would just like to give a very brief context and introduction to what fire is all about. So fast healthcare interoperability resources, shortly called as FHIR, uh, is a specification to standardize the data formats and APIs for interoperability. Right. So the healthcare industry, if you if you look at the healthcare industry, there are different players in the healthcare industry. Right. Like you have hospitals, you have clinics, you have diagnostic labs, you have insurance providers, and each of these player uh, they generate a lot of data. They maintain the patient data. Uh, they maintain stuff like clinic, clinical records. Um, so it's very important to to make sure that uh, to to offer a seamless customer experience, patient experience, uh, the data format is interoperable, so that it opens up huge possibilities um, for um, uh, improving the the uh, customer experience. So that when a patient moves from one hospital to the other, uh, he need not carry bulky files, and hospital can save time by quickly accessing the data. So, so this interoperability can be made possible only if a standards body defines uh, the data uh, model uh, in terms of how the data structure is going to look like and how this data structure is going to be exposed as APIs uh, to the outside world. Right? So the standards body that's uh, defining this is HL7. Uh, 
um, uh, so so HL7 has 1600 members. It's present in 50 countries, and there are already 500 plus members. Now, if you look at the type of uh, uh, entities that the healthcare industry generally deals with, and and these are the types of entities, or or I would rather say family of entities uh, that would be relevant for the healthcare uh, industry. So it starts from the uh, allergy, clinical impression, diagnostic reports, um, uh, medical statement, observation. So, so you have a, a, a huge set of sub entities within each of these entities. Um, and, um, and each sub entity has a data model in terms of what attributes it has. So that when, when um, a healthcare application needs to deal with that data, if it's fire compliant, um, it, can, it can do it automatically. Right, so so it, it simplifies the the end, end user experience. So so this is a, this is a very basic example in terms of the common entities. Now let's go into the uh, next level of detail in terms of why do we need FHIR fire? Right. So so first thing is it empowers healthcare practitioners. So healthcare practitioners in this case could be uh, private practitioners, it could be hospitals, it could be diagnostic labs. So so it makes data accessible in a consistent format because it's defined by an industry uh, regulation it's, it's standard so that there is no um, uh, uh, challenge in terms of okay when i go to hospital one uh, i register as a patient i have my electronic health record so when i go to hospital two the hospital two need not start the whole process from scratch i mean imagine the plight of a patient when he has to fill all the details from the beginning just because he moves from one state to the other or he moves from one provider to the other. So, so data data is seamlessly made accessible through standard uh, uh, data structures and APIs, um, and it's it's a, it's a huge empowering factor for healthcare professionals. Then, if you look at it from a patient perspective, it it allows uh, the patient first approach. So, patient first approach is what what does the standard mean for patients? So, so again to reiterate what I just said, so, so it enhances the patient experience. So if the patient registers once in a particular healthcare provider, the same data can be accessed by another healthcare provider. It could be a competing healthcare provider or it could be any other player in your healthcare uh, chain. It could be your insurance provider. It could be your diagnostic labs. Uh, it could be any of these. Right? So, so from a patient standpoint, they, they can access um, everything from one place through an app on the cloud and it's seamless for them. Now, Third point is the, the ecosystem for software vendors. If you take any healthcare industry, there will be an ecosystem of uh, software vendors like your hospital information management systems. Uh, there would be uh, 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 diagnostic apps. Uh, there would be a uh, uh, clinic management system. There will be appointment scheduling system. Now, if you talk about um, any hospital, if you look at their IT estate, uh, the acquisition of these software would have happened over a period of time. And um, and if all the software vendors commit to a fire as a standard and if they change and enhance their software in terms of their compliance of their data model to fire uh, to follow fire standard, then any hospital that uh, has a combination of uh, uh, healthcare applications will seamlessly interoperate with a different hospital that has a different combination of healthcare applications because the data format is understood by both the applications. So, so that way it's, uh, it, it makes it much easier for software vendors to also uh, uh, collaborate better and it also makes it possible for hospitals to um, uh, procure software that are fire compliant so that they know that they don't have to struggle with integration challenges when they uh, procure software. Then uh, the other uh, uh, benefit is uh, the healthcare experience is significantly enhanced through mobile enablement. Uh, because we all know uh, nowadays in healthcare doctors roam around with tablets when they visit uh, patients. So, so all the history of the patient in terms of the recent diagnostic lab report, the entire uh, history, uh, all the patient's uh, conditions in terms of the allergy information, drug information is seamlessly made accessible in one interface through a, a, a mobile driven interface and posted on the cloud. So, so it empowers the healthcare practitioners a lot. Um, in terms of the overall um, uh, provider experience and this translates to the patient experience as well. So, so if the healthcare practitioners are empowered, patients are empowered as well. So the time taken for uh, decision making is reduced. Um, the efficiency and uh, scope of errors by the doctors are reduced because data is in a central place. 
and they need not rely on the uh, memory of the patient because patient need not have the burden of remembering what allergy conditions they have what drug uh, reactions they have so on and so forth and last but not the least most and most important part is uh, there is a regulatory requirement from cms um, which which mandates certain parts of the electronic health records to be uh, made uh, uh, to be exposed as apis and exposed to third parties to provide us who need it so and this is the right time uh, to to convert your healthcare applications uh, and enable them to be fire compliant uh, so so these are the uh, key reasons for uh, 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 the 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 enablement of fire so now now that we have seen uh, 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 the reasons now let's take a look at a very simple example because when i demonstrate this with a very simple example uh, it will make sense so once i walk you through the simple example we'll look at a more advanced example uh, to see so so a, a patient uh, is registered with uh, in a particular state in the us um, and uh, all his electronic health records are available uh, with a particular provider now for some reason uh, this uh, uh, patient has moved to a different state maybe for a temporary reason maybe he's on a vacation or visiting someone and there he has fallen sick and he visits the local healthcare practitioner in his current destination which is in a different state now the doctor uh, when she prescribes a medicine for him uh, she is not sure in terms of the uh, allergic reactions the patient already has uh, in terms of the drug reactions or in terms of the existing medical conditions because the patient is not able to fully remember the list of allergies uh, he has so so because uh, the electronic health record is uh, uh, fire compliant and it's made available in a uh, uh, in in the source hospital um, uh, through the right access control the doctor is able to access it through a mobile device which is a fire compliant healthcare app so here this is where the uh, interoperability comes into picture so so the hospitals empower each other so they make this data available to all the other hospitals so that this particular situation is easily addressed so so doctor can easily key in the patient id and retrieve it from the electronic health record from the cloud and and the doctor knows that yes there is a particular uh, uh, drug that uh, this this patient uh, is allergic to and she prescribes a completely different drug that solves the uh, uh, patient's problem so this is a, a very simple uh, use case and i'm consciously picking up a, a simple use case to to illustrate uh, the the basic uh, 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 capability now let's take a look at more advanced uh, scenarios in the context of different players in the uh, uh, healthcare industry so the first band actually applies to the end user so from an end user perspective what this opens up is different healthcare mobile apps um, and and this can be across multiple uh, scenarios and use cases that it is also uh, makes it possible to uh, access the diagnostic reports so all the lab reports uh, uh, that uh, the the patient has can they can store it in the digital format and made accessible through a mobile app um, enrollment so when he moves from one uh, pro provider to other the enrollment process is significantly simplified because the data is already stored in a central place um, and it also simplifies the claims process uh, because data is available centrally and all the end user need to do is provide the reference and the whoever needs to process the payment will have it uh, now when it comes to the wearable devices uh, 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 i mean we all know that uh, wearable devices generate a lot of data and and today uh, i'm going to talk about how different industry players are uh, addressing this so so basically uh, these wearable devices generate a lot of data and this data um, uh, can be converted into fire compliant format uh, which can be made uh, um, accessible to healthcare applications uh, different applications and uh, intelligent diagnostics can be done uh, from it right uh, and uh, chatbots and other intelligent applications can also be uh, made available to the end user which makes it significantly simple for the end user to book appointments for example just by by integrating with siri now imagine a use case where a patient quickly books an appointment just by talking to alexa or by talking to siri right because the healthcare provider is committing to fhir and there is an appointments api and uh, they have uh, enabled the appointments api and integrated with amazon or apple the customer is able to do it with uh, 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 siri okay i don't know why the screen sharing just give me a minute okay now um, yeah so this is the use case from a uh, uh, end user perspective now let's look at it from a healthcare provider perspective 
this again, I only picked the top use cases. Uh, there are so many possibilities. So clinical decision support systems uh, can significantly benefit from uh, uh, fire compliance. Clinical data repository is another use case. Um, all, the, all the bio research and clinical research can leverage on the latest digital uh, trends like AI and ML, artificial intelligence, machine learning models, uh, because it's a very fertile ground for innovation. And uh, and uh, and especially in the current situation, uh, based on the patient's past record, based on the drug reaction, vaccine reactions, um, uh, pharma pharmaceutical companies can leverage ML models to see the vaccine uh, behavior for any new variants that come up. So it also helps in the current situation that we currently are in, in terms of uh, uh, identifying the vaccine uh, formula for uh, potential virus variants. And this just opens up the possibility, provided the customer consents to um, use his or her information for these kind of clinical trials and researches. Uh, then hospital management systems can be made uh, as smart systems um, so that uh, uh, interoperability is uh, enabled, uh, cloud enablement uh, uh, can be made possible, uh, and also uh, mobile enablement can be made possible so through smartphones and tablets. Um, so, so the actual hospital management system can actually sit on the cloud and hospitals can significantly optimize their IT infrastructure so that you don't have to have computers in your hospital. You can just have uh, your mobile devices and the actual data sits on the cloud. Um, now insurance cover verification. So hospitals can seamlessly connect to insurance providers uh, that the patient is registered to and verify if uh, the package is genuine and if the cover actually exists or not. Uh, an admission and discharge notification because any provider that needs to know when a patient is admitted or discharged, like insurance providers, for example, can automatically receive the notification in real time. Uh, depending on uh, um, uh, the patient's uh, data. The last row is for the actually the payments uh, guys, the insurance guys and the payment processor guys. So claims verification processing is can be significantly simplified. Uh, payer to payer data exchange is possible. Um, actually, the a very interesting update, very recent update is uh, uh, earlier there was a mandate to automate and standardize the payer to payer data exchange format. Uh, but uh, there was a request from different players that they need more time and there's a complex process because of uh, different uh, dependencies. So there, uh, the, as of January 1, 2022, that particular restriction uh, uh, was kind of uh, uh, relaxed. But but it's just a matter of time. But it's the right time to 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 actually start doing it because at some point of time this regulation is going to come back. Um, um, and I'm going to talk about the steps required to to enable it in in a short while. So stay tuned for that. And last but not the least, uh, incentives and offers based on healthcare data. Uh, again, the statistics say that customers are willing to uh, 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 share their information in exchange for discounts and offers. So, so today, insurance providers uh, already some insurance providers are doing it. So they offer discounts in your insurance payment depending on the your health data. So it's also an incentive for the user to to stay healthy, uh, to volunteer sharing of data in an anonymous format or personalized format, um, uh, so that insurance uh, they can get insurance benefits um and and they can also uh, partner with third party network through a digital ecosystem and uh, bundled offerings can be provided to end users depending on their needs so these are some of the uh, use cases uh, that uh, fire opens up and and what i'm showing here is just tip of the iceberg and the opportunities are huge <coughs> now going to the uh, next part to show how industry has adopted so all the industry giants have adopted it uh, specifically, uh, I would like to mention the likes of smart device uh, manufacturers like Apple, Fitbit uh, and Google. Um, and uh, as you know that uh, the health kit uh, component of the iOS operating system uh, uh, part is, is a fire compliant. And uh, there was a press release from Apple in 2018 when they released their uh, Apple Watch uh, where, where they have uh, claimed that 67 hospitals have onboarded and they have signed up with Apple to, and, and they're making their data available to the Apple uh, uh, ecosystem. And and they're making the electronic health record compliant, uh, FHR compliant, and they also accept the data from the Apple devices. And here, Apple directly connects your healthcare device and the healthcare provider, so data is not stored within Apple. Now, and this opens up different hardware ecosystems. So Apple is known to uh, encourage hardware add-ons to their smartwatches, um, so that can detect uh, advanced scenarios like, uh, for example, uh, uh, blood sugar uh, diagnosis. Right? So that can integrate with uh, Apple device and that data can be securely transmitted to your healthcare provider because all the parties commit to the fire standard. So, so this is a, 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 just a glimpse and all the giants uh, like the IBM, Oracle, Salesforce, 
Microsoft. <laughs> they provide FHR compliant backends and serv servers so that they make it easy to onboard FHR application on their respective cloud platforms. So, so this is the commitment that the industry giants are making and this is a very uh, strong reason for you as a healthcare provider to commit to FHIR and start uh, defining the adoption strategy uh, if you have not already thought about it. And it's not just from the perspective of uh, complying to a regulatory compliance. Uh, it also opens up new revenue models in adjacent industry verticals. Uh, it opens up the possibility of a digital ecosystem, which I'll talk about as the uh, 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 as one of the uh, uh, key uh, outcomes of uh, fire compliance. Now let's look at uh, the common challenges because now we are actually hitting uh, uh, the rubber is hitting the road. Now, now we know the benefits of FHIR fire. Uh, now we need, we'll see what it actually takes to get it going. So before we actually go into the details, it's important to understand what challenges uh, you can expect in uh, a fire implementation. So, so usually uh, in a, a fire environment, uh, usually in healthcare industry uh, applications, data is uh, fragmented. It's fragmented across disparate systems because these systems uh, have been procured over the years, uh, and uh, it's generally not interoperable. So, so it's it's usually there's a challenge to actually have this data in one place within the healthcare provider. So, so it's important to, to look at it from an integration perspective. So that's the reason why integration is a very key dependency for fire implementation. So if your data is fragmented, it's very difficult to make it available in a, in a consistent manner for third parties. First, it should be useful to you. So that's the first step. And there's a very heavy dependency on legacy systems because legacy systems, due to their nature, uh, it's it's closed. It's, it's hard to take data out of legacy and put data, data into legacy without the traditional green screen user interface. So that's the reason why you need to have a legacy based integration uh, uh, capability in your IT estate so that you are able to API enable your legacy systems. So there are many ways in which you can do that. Either you can think of uh, uh, getting rid of legacy and buying a FHR compliant shiny new application, or you could plan to, to protect your investments and still uh, live with legacy in an efficient manner by building the right set of connectors and adapters because, because it's, it can be done in a cost efficient manner. You can transform your integration into a modern cloud native environment by building the right set of microservices, building the right set of adapters on your legacy and API enable your legacy so that you are able to comply to the regulatory requirements and also participate in the use cases that I talked about in the previous slide. Okay. The third point is integration challenges with legacy and modern cloud centric solutions. It's just a uh, a re-emphasis of what I already, already mentioned, right? So, so why do we need to uh, to modernize your legacy? Because they need to be made cloud friendly and mobile friendly, which means you need to make sure that you put in the right levels of authentication, authorization, and the required identity management on top of your, of your data in legacy, so that you you are making sure that the data is only made accessible to people who need it and not to everyone um, who is accessing it. And there's always a cost of modernization. Um, uh, as I mentioned, it, it's it's always tempting for healthcare providers to to do it do it as a big bang. Doing it as a big bang has a lot of risk. It's going to be time consuming. It's going to cost more. So so that's something which is usually followed by greenfield healthcare providers. But for established healthcare providers, uh, doing it as a, a transformation, integration, modernization, and transformation is is uh, a common approach. Is what we have seen uh, from our uh, experience. Then uh, IT complexity uh, is uh, usually uh, uh, very high in uh, healthcare providers because of the way it has evolved over the years. And, and uh, usually there's a long time to market for any changes because of the tight coupling. And, and, uh, and this is a, a, a right uh, um, a trigger point or a, a driver point for you to modernize your IT uh, estate so that you are not only uh, uh, complying to uh, fire, but also making sure that any new changes and future capabilities or future business models that you want to explore, you are able to go to market quickly. Because today we are in this uh, uh, mature digital world where new players, nimble players are capturing the market and they are threatening the status quo. They are, they, they, the competition is increasing from completely unexpected circles and there's a lot of funding and investment for these, uh, 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 as they call the unicorn startups. Right? And they are mobile first, cloud first, API first, and they can launch new features within days because they follow cloud native, they follow continuous deployment and all that, right? Compared to, to the changes in a complex IT system where it takes minimum two to three months, it may even take weeks to do impact analysis. We have seen systems where uh, it takes 
several weeks to get all the 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 kind of technical teams from different applications together do a workshop to do an architectural impact analysis and then define an implementation plan today we are living in an age where the speed of deployment is very critical and last but not the least we are seeing a pattern where uh, the challenges uh, for healthcare it is only seen as a support system instead of uh, a strategic differentiator because right? unless you look at your it as a strategic differentiator you'll not be able to to reinvent or redefine the customer experience and customers have choices because they can easily shift from one healthcare provider to other healthcare provider because of fire they can easily do that right so so you should stop looking at your it only as a support system and look at it as a strategic uh, piece uh, in your overall uh, 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 business it's a business asset rather than just a support system right so now let's take a look at the actual steps in terms of how you start this so step is to first define your purpose and vision for the transformation so why you do you need to do it do you are you doing it only to comply to the regulation or are you doing it to to fulfill one of those use cases that i talked about it's also about the business strategy right like why do you know this like is it important why is it important to stay relevant so you need to get the business stakeholders on board to 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 kind of discuss okay where do we want to be as a healthcare provider 2 years down the line 3 years down the line why 2 years 3 years down the line Three months down the line, four months down the line, because the competition is increasing, right? So you define the purpose, you define the vision, so that gives you a a, a very solid foundation, a very solid focus to to do whatever you are doing. So always define and start with the why, the purpose. So once you have defined the purpose, uh, you know what what needs to be done. You will have a, 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 an idea of what needs to be done, what new offerings you need to do, what challenges you need to address. So so define those challenges or opportunities in the form of customer stories customer journeys right we call this epics in some of the uh, implementations right so 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 have a, a practice in your uh, software development life cycle that completely focuses on um, the journey from an outside in perspective now how how does the customer look at my business how does the customer engage with the business so that's the reason why it's very important to look at digital channels like social media and other channels where customers are very vocal about sharing their feedback sharing their experience uh, recently i was part of uh, one of the conference where i was talking I, i was listening to a speech from one of the uh, chief digital officers where they actually had a, a, a this is actually from a retail industry example where there there was a change done to the product offering based on the discussion in social media right because customers are very vocal there and it's a huge opportunity because you don't usually get a chance to directly engage with the customer and customers may not always be articulate when 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 they share direct feedback to you right so uh, so you need to identify customer journey and have a, a customer journey practice to to define the journey identify the touch points and once you document the touch points you will know whether the touch point is fit for purpose or not that's step 3 so so then you can audit the challenges pain areas you know where it stands what needs to be done to make it compliant so that way you don't have to boil the ocean you don't have to do it all at once because if you do that it's going to take you years and it's not a good idea at all so so that way you can define a road map that's very progressive and and what we call the value stream so value stream is a, a subset of your complete set of customer journeys which you you aim to reinvent or uh, uh, re, re, um, refactor so that it delivers value very quickly so you can have a minimum lovable product uh, something which which the customers instantly love which is not a complete uh, uh, change to the uh, uh, your uh, uh, application portfolio then uh, step 4 is uh, based on the outputs of step 1 2 and 3 you define an integration centric uh, technology architecture again you do it step by step you identify what are the technical components required do you need an api gateway do you need a microservice do you need to go cloud native is your legacy uh, uh, can you build adapters on top of your legacy to make it possible so so that you do a step by step approach um, and if your legacy is completely uh, unusable if you've been a lot of pain areas then you can think of a build versus buy decision you can think of uh, adopting a saas based uh, digital healthcare solutions that is already fhi compliant and that's a call you can take based on your organizational priorities and as as i've been mentioning it's not always uh, required to go in that direction and last but not the least it's very important to build a solid foundation for sustained um, uh, innovation and activity uh, when you build a foundation so here we are basically changing your it foundation to make it more integration centric centric you're making it more cloud native uh, uh, enabled you're modernizing your system so that you need to have some form of governance in place and when i say governance the whole idea of governance is empowerment make sure that your it teams have a frame of reference they have a framework they have something to refer to 
um, uh, so 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 that way you you can avoid reinventing the wheel, avoid making mistakes because once you define the building blocks, um, uh, every uh, service or component that you build or every API that you build follows a very common set of steps. Uh, so you don't have, each team does not have to reinvent and remake those mistakes again. So it's more of a uh, governance from an empowerment standpoint and not governance from a controlling standpoint. And we have governance frameworks from our experience. We have an integration decision tree. We have patterns, principles, security policies, which is which is something which we have been doing over the years, and we'll be very happy to uh, uh, share that with you for anyone who is interested in that. So, so it's very important to align your SDLC to uh, uh, to the integration framework. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, how uh, item number four will look like. And this is an example of uh, the different building blocks. So this is where uh, we get into the meat of uh, uh, this. So uh, a hybrid cloud native integration platform for digital health uh, healthcare would typically look like this. So, so an API gateway is the component that securely exposes your uh, systems data and capabilities from your healthcare applications to the different world. Uh, different world right? So, uh, so, so, so an API gateway is part of a broader family of product called an API management product. So, an API management product provides gateway. It provides a, a developer portal. So, a developer portal is actually a, a, a website that's used by uh, third-party application developers. It's used by insurance providers to integrate. So, it's like a self-service portal that makes uh, uh, data available in an automated fashion. So. So you can uh, you can get access to the APIs and build applications and once that application is launched, the data access will be automatic. So the developer portal simplifies the development uh, onboarding, your partner onboarding to do this. Now, now if you look at the other building blocks, you have the uh, microservices. Again, a microservice based architecture is uh, a commonly used architecture to support what we call the cloud native uh, style of uh, application development. So cloud native is a broad term that's used to uh, describe the, the current state of uh, uh, digital applications today. So today everything is on cloud and mobile. And the reason why I state uh, the uh, emphasis on cloud and mobile is the consumption patterns have changed over the years. So today the uh, expectation is when customers use applications on mobile, they expect it to work 24 by 7 and in a seamless way, and they expect the response times to be like instant, which means the expectation is for the uh, technology provider for automatic scaling, seamless scaling. So gone are the days where you 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 kind of have a, a capacity management team. Uh, they decide, OK, I have 100,000 uh, 100, users now and I have servers with like, let's say four CPUs and maybe 16 gig RAM. And once I onboard my next uh, 500,000 uh, 500, uh, 5, customers or 10,000 customers, I'll think about procuring new servers. No, today we are living in the age of uh, automatic uh, scaling up and scaling down, which is made possible by the cloud computing and all the technology components that actually make this scale up and scale down possible in a seamless way is broadly called as the cloud native architecture. So, so here we call it as a cloud native integration platform because there's always overlap between your application architecture and your integration architecture, which need to seamlessly work together. So a cloud native architecture includes a microservice based architecture. It includes a micro gateway. Uh, it includes containerization like Docker, Kubernetes. Um, I mean, in the context of this talk, I'll not go into too much of detail. Probably you've already heard about these uh, uh, areas like uh, Docker, Kubernetes. So your containerization of your application makes it easy for your cloud native framework to scale up and scale down based on demand. Um, so, so you can put your data on the container and uh, and and because of your uh, the use cases that I talked about, AI and ML models, and you're talking about mobile apps, the demand on your uh, infrastructure will be very high, and your container framework will take the demand uh, based on uh, based on the consumption. And then you need to have a lot of uh, other supplementary capabilities like your service mesh, your monitoring, your uh, system. Uh, they call it the site reliability engineering and system observability. Like you need to make sure that any transaction that goes through uh, this uh, system, you are able to trace it like uh, uh, like a record like you can see where it started where it where it went where it originated and where it terminated so there are tools that show you it in a graph based visual model so that if there are any problems or errors you are able to instantly pinpoint the error so you know what's happening it's almost like having a x-ray machine on your id environment to give you the analogy of uh, the healthcare right so uh, so so this uh, kind of uh, tools and building blocks uh, help you to uh, transform your uh, 
healthcare IT landscape into a modern cloud native uh, uh, application. And it makes it much easier to, uh, and it makes me, it provides a very good foundation for you to uh, be fire compliant. Because it not only allows you to comply to the regulatory requirements, it also opens up new opportunities that I talked about in the first case. And if you look at the healthcare systems, uh, I mean, these are some of the common healthcare systems that you're seeing here, which is which is very commonly used in many uh, uh, healthcare providers, so I'll not go into it. And last but not the least, the data layer, these are data generated by each of the systems. So you need to have a, a robust data practice uh, that, that uses uh, areas like data virtualization, uh, uh, data analytics, because today analytics is very critical. I mean, analytics is also a very important um, data family for the fire compliance. Right. So there are a lot of analytics APIs. Um, so you need to have mature data data uh, building blocks in terms of the technology components like a data hub, data virtualization to make it possible. Right. So and the what you see on the right is uh, the development methodology. Like you have you today when you talk about cloud native DevOps processes, an integral part of the cloud native uh, style of application development. Right. So 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 there are tools like API stubbing tools, testing automation tools, continuous integration, continuous deployment. Uh, there, there are uh, concepts like infrastructure as a code. Right? So all these building blocks come together and uh, this is a, a, a vision of how your uh, IT can be transformed. And this can be done in a step by step manner. It's not that all these building blocks need to be procured all at once. So you can have a perfect coexistence of your legacy systems. That's why you, you have adapters. You, you still continue to use your existing infrastructure. So if you have diverse applications, I would presume that you would already have some form of an integration tool like an ESB or a web service or any event driven uh, stuff like an Apache Kafka or any, any of your um, traditional middleware based products. Um, so, so you could use that. Now I'd like to show you uh, how the uh, different worlds map together. So, so, so I'll not spend too much of time just, just to give you a glimpse of the, uh, the uh, transformation, like how you are uh, on the left hand side, you see the building blocks that you find in a traditional IT estate. And what you see on the right is what you'll find in a modern, uh, uh, cloud native based modernized idea estate. So, so, so it's, it's basically a, a kind of a reference chart, uh, which, which kind of uh, shows uh, how you can plan your transition. And as I said, you need not do this all at once. You can use this as a starting point to pick and choose and build your road transformation roadmap. Okay, uh, now moving on to the uh, next part. No, no, okay. So, so based on all these uh, uh, um, uh, steps that we have shown, uh, we have been doing this digital transformation across different industry verticals. So, so what we have done together is to 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 help you uh, start from a, 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 a particular point and not start from scratch. We have put together a, a set of tools and frameworks. So, we have a set of products. We have this uh, interoperability kit for healthcare data exchange. So, so we have a product family called Digit Market. So, so digit market includes multiple products like an API manager, uh, coupler. So coupler is an integration tool. Uh, we have deployment automation, which is diplomatic. We have auto step automaton. So these tools basically fit in each of these building blocks that I showed here. So, so, so you have a lot of third party tools in the market as well, uh, but we do have a set of tools that are well integrated with each other. They are low cost, easy to adopt, um, and we bundle them. We bundle some of them with our service offerings. And what may be interesting to you is in how these tools are put to action in the fire context. So, so we have built an industry specific healthcare industry specific starter pack, uh, which uh, talks about uh, uh, which which basically creates these data models and implements this data model as a reference point. So, so if you if you take uh, all the uh, data points of uh, fire, so we have pre-configured the fire data model. Uh, on the digit market API manager and we have configured the default rules for authentication and authorization so that you don't have to do it from scratch. So all the entities of fire have been configured as a starting point. Then if you take coupler, uh, we have configured the northbound point of integration, which means for each of the API, uh, we have configured uh, how it will look like when it comes to uh, a template integration. So, so that you know that for a particular use case, you know that uh, an appointment API will be used, you know that a claims API will be used. So we have stitched these things together for common use cases, and we have kept the southbound open and connected it to stubs, so that when you adopt this solution, all you need to do is replace stubs with your actual adapters and your legacy systems, which significantly cuts down your time of uh, uh, adoption of uh, the um, uh, system. 
then we have we have some of the legacy transformation patterns and principles from our experience in doing this uh, uh, legacy so i'd like to actually uh, uh, walk you through a, a, a more detailed use case to show you how these different tools fit together and actually show you a glimpse of the starter pack so that you can actually visualize and see how it fits in these tools so i'll show you a very brief demo of these tools so so how these tools fit together so so any hospital will need to make its data from its hospital management system securely available to different players so this is where the api management uh, uh, from the digit market and coupler fit together um, so so in this customer journey a new patient visits a hospital and hospital registers the user into the system if not already registered and here it's done in a fire compliant manner so that the gateway makes it uh, possible for securely uh, uh, making the data available and if the patient already has a patient id that's registered with other hospital all he need to do is provide the patient id and, and and through the api gateway it can fetch data from the other hospital which is fire compliant so this is the ho cross hospital data interchange that's made possible across two hospitals now when uh, the user takes a test in a diagnostic labs either the diagnostic labs which is uh, affiliated with the hospital or any external diagnostic labs that cross data exchange is made possible um, uh, and the reports are made available in a central place so there is a seamless exchange of data there and the insurance companies can have access to all the health records um, uh, to to assess the uh, the current health situation so that they can uh, uh, process the claims in a much seamless manner now let's see how this all uh, fits together in the form of a demo so so basically what we have is the starter kit so i'll show you a starter kit uh, which uh, which which kind of shows how um, it looks from a, a, a patient perspective and from a, do a doctor perspective so let me uh, kind of open uh, i hope you are able to see the uh, screen okay so so as a patient um, uh, i need to and this is a scenario where uh, i have moved from one city to another my but my health record is registered with a different uh, uh, provider so what we have done is we have implemented a starter pack which, is sh which shows a, a, a kind of an application in terms of how a patient journey will look like so so a patient is booking an appointment uh because you have the scheduling api uh, uh this uh, this data is fetched from the scheduling api which is connected link integrated with the healthcare provider um so so i i, I pick a particular slot and I, I confirm and and this patient id uh, is is kind of registered so the appointment is confirmed and booked successfully and the patient is getting a confirmation now as a, a, a doctor i go into the uh, uh, hospital management system and i get access to all the uh, live appointments so in this case i get the actual appointment of this patient and and uh, i can and i can look up so i can accept the appointment and which is which means it's registered with the system and and before the patient actually visits the doctor can get access to the patient details this is an example of the electronic health record um made securely accessible from the other healthcare provider and uh, the doctor can have pre uh, uh, can have advanced information about the allergy in terms of the disease or drugs so so this data is actually uh, 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 generated uh, through the fire compliant system and and doctor has access to it so so this is a, an example of how uh, the api is actually put into real use now let's take a look at the other components of the starter pack so in the other components of the starter pack uh, what we have done is we have provided a, a, a kind of a interface to um, to show how these apis can easily be integrated so so we have the identified these four uh, four different categories of users so one is the uh, uh, areas related to the uh, clinic and here we have identified different uh, uh, subdomains like the practitioner capabilities practitioner role capabilities procedure risk assessment and if you are aware of the fire uh, data model you will be able to relate to this so here when i go into the uh, uh, allergy tolerance api i mean this is the api was act that was actually used in the other application that i showed you so here this actually shows the different apis in terms of the allergy history uh, it shows uh, uh, the different parameters for the allergy so so i authorize with my gateway here so when i authorize the token is generated behind the scenes and now i can actually make a request so so i make a request so here you can see that this actually hits our gateway which is provisioned in the digit market and i specify all the tokens and and for security purpose i have hidden it but this is actually the bearer token that hits the gateway so when i when i submit the request this shows that the request is generated and you see the response and this response is fire compliant so 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 you, it shows the kind of list uh, uh, required drugs uh, that are there what kind of allergies are there and you saw this uh, arctic area arctic area apparently is a skin disease a skin related allergy uh, that's uh, that's basically a medical condition 
so this so this data is even though it's in the machine readable form the hospital management application uh, uh, demo that i showed you use this data to to uh, to warn the doctor in advance before the patient actually visits in water right so so like this you have uh, uh, the uh, apis for all the categories so it's like you have for nutrition so you can make a request so you you see all the uh, details in terms of the nutrition so so this is a starter pack that we have provisioned on the gateway and we have integrated with coupler so so if i show you the coupler so the coupler has the required flows here so all these flows uh, that's required to pull data from different uh, uh, systems are pre provisioned so all you need to do is to kind of change the uh, uh, endpoint maybe change the transformation rules so that it's uh, you are able to to kind of contextualize it in your environment and you have a starting point so that you don't have to build this from scratch so so this is the uh, uh, other part and just to also show you how it actually looks it looks from an api management standpoint so this is a, a, a digit market api manager where we have we have provisioned all the uh, healthcare apis uh, that i showed you in our starter kit and when i uh, go to a, a particular uh, 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 example like medication knowledge in this case so this allows me to to kind of define and, and monetize so it's it's uh, it's hosted on a cloud okay it's timed out yeah so the the developer portal actually uh, makes it uh, uh, easy to 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 kind of look at the monetization uh, it makes it easy for you to access the documentation of the api uh, here it, it actually gives you uh, the request response uh, uh, examples um, then it actually gives you uh, sample data so that you can visualize how the request response will look like and a developer portal allows you to also discuss as a mm -hmm. uh, as a provider it allows you to uh, discuss in terms of how you can actually use it so so as a third party startup or a healthcare application developer i can build my application i can register my application i can consume an api uh, i can get access to the token so here i can uh, uh, I, I can get access to the client id and client secret and i know that uh, my tokens are going to expire these are the active tokens and i can I, I can use it in my application so so an api management makes it easy for any third party to see what apis uh, are made available so so visualize your hospital management system your F FHR compliant uh, program or initiative made available to third parties uh, through a uh, through a api management developer portal so this is how this will be changed with your hospital brand and all the uh, the the uh, composite apis uh, which are related to use cases can be made easily uh, available okay. so 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 that's uh, uh, pretty much it in terms of uh, uh, how the uh, api management part uh, looks like so now coming back to the uh, uh, presentation itself uh, yeah so so what this uh, makes it possible is uh, it enables digital ecosystems so so you can think of a digital uh, healthcare ecosystem uh, where you can partner with uh, different players in the healthcare industry like your dietitians alternate medicine providers fitness fitness trainers smart device vendors and you can be a digital ecosystem and you can look at monetizing this uh, in addition to your core offerings and you can also partner with adjacent provider profiles like your delivery partners returns processing uh, like for example you can partner with ubers for example you can uh, order a, a patient pickup service in partnership with uber and everything can be made possible through apis and you can integrate your appointment management system with a right booking system with uber because it's made possible through apis and you can you can uh, complement it with uh, food delivery also maybe, maybe let's say if the doctor prescribes healthy food um, you can partner with uh, healthy food providers food delivery agents and uh, uh, and connect all these players together to offer differentiated services to your customers so 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 this gives you a picture of uh, uh, how fire not only enables uh, compliance and regulatory requirements but also opens up new digital uh, offerings digital capabilities uh, to differentiate and uh, uh, take your healthcare business to the next level so thank you very much for your time